So, who will be the leader of the opposition? Shortly after five o'clock this afternoon, we learned it's not going to be Angela Regal. She withdrew. Clear that she had less support from MPs than her rival challenger, Owen Smith. There's no formal rule that stops a woman rising to the top of the Labour Party. It just never seems to happen. And so the great contest this summer is between Owen Smith and Jeremy Corbyn. It's already underway. And if you support the aims of the Labour Party, you can vote uh, in it if you want by paying £25, £25 and registering by 5pm tomorrow. More expensive than voting in X Factor, but more important too. Well, our political editor, Nick Watt, is with me. Nick, the campaigns have started. The race is on. I mean, what do we know so far well, about Well, a bit of a mixed picture for Jeremy Corbyn. He took a bit of a hit today when his attempt on the National Executive Committee to overturn some very strict rules, £25 fee to be a registered supporter, that stays. A February cut-off to be a member, that stays. Um, but what we do know is it appears that about 40,000 people may have signed up as registered supporters. The deadline is tomorrow. The reason why we know that is that a senior Labour figure says that the party has taken a million quid in the last few days so divide that uh, by 25 <laughs> and you get uh, 40,000. Uh, what we do know is that Jeremy Corbyn is trying to reprise the very successful tactics that he had last year. So lots of union support. Senior Labour source told me that there are 50 people manning phones in Unite offices in London today talking to supporters and another thing momentum that group that's supporting jeremy corbyn they sent out an email saying to their supporters saying you can phone up you can canvas people from the comfort of your own sitting room using our special app that was an app that they devised last year worked very well last year i mean let's just look ahead and we'll discuss this uh, in, in a few minutes but if jeremy corbyn wins does the party split I sense that the anti-Corbyn forces believe that they face a formidable challenge because there was that YouGov poll which showed that Jeremy Corbyn is ahead against any candidate. But I do not sense that there is an appetite for a split. What there is an appetite for amongst the plotters against him is for a war of attrition to keep coming back, to say that he will fail, to come back again. And interestingly, tonight, there's talk of reviving the old tradition that was abandoned by Ed Miliband to have elections to the shadow cabinet. And what that would mean is that Jeremy Corbyn would not be able to appoint his shadow cabinet. And remember, 176 out of 231 Labour MPs said they had no confidence in him. They would be appointing the shadow cabinet. OK, we'll talk about some of that. Um, I would say it feels like a right royal battle for the heart and soul of the Labour Party, except many in the party don't believe in royalty. But what is clear is that a weird democratic experiment is underway. Given that window of 48 hours in which you can pay, register and vote, the whole campaigning effort by the side is directed at getting supporters to sign up and all by tomorrow afternoon at five. A huge mobilisation is underway, grassroots campaigners, there's Momentum, as Nick just mentioned, backing Jeremy Corbyn and there's another group called Saving Labour, backing anybody but Corbyn. Secunda Kamani has spent the last two days on the Labour front line and our warning, his piece contains some uncomradely language. <laughs> Are you against Jeremy Corbyn? Across the country, rival Labour factions are battling it out. The support the Labour Party, support Jeremy Corbyn. They're vying for the backing of party members. Do you know how you're well, planning on voting? Not for him. But the focus now is on ordinary supporters who have until tomorrow afternoon to register for a say in the leadership race if they pay £25. Jeremy Corbyn is a fucking disgrace. Rush hour in central London and Saving Labour are trying to convince people to sign up to vote out Jeremy Corbyn. I've never known a time like it. I mean, this guy's appalling. Oh no, he's horrendous. At like every level. Worse. I'm Jewish as well, so oh, God, I'm, yeah. I'm feeling the anti-Semitism <laughs> in my own thing. party. Yeah, it's, it's and quite frankly, now is the time for people to actually step forward, and I'm thinking of it myself at the moment, to actually step forward and actually save this party. If Mr. Milliband, and I'm talking about David now, actually thinks anything of this party, okay, sod his charitable job in New York City, get back and sort this bloody thing sure. out. He's the only but right now we need people like you to sign up, like in the, you know, we need to get rid of Corbyn. I know it's a longer road than that, but right now it's like chopping the head of a monster. We're campaigning for strong opposition, strong leadership, strong, and not you against... You don't think Corbyn's a strong leader? No, well, at the moment we, the, the, the situation in front says otherwise, so we don't, we don't believe it. Um, but you like his values, but yeah, yeah, because you think he's not going to get support, you... Uh, I mean, it's a bit more, it's, it's complicating in the sense of that 
we are we agree with the politics as, as a whole. Well, but if it's, you believe with someone's values, then yeah. you shouldn't be like, well, they're not getting enough support. Let's, you know, support someone who might yeah. be stronger. Meanwhile, during a sunny Sheffield lunch hour, the left-wing campaign group Momentum are making the case for Jeremy Corbyn. Now, I was following him online, you know, when he had it on Facebook. And yeah. All, and he said... He said some good stuff. Yeah. He wants to hear everybody's voice anyway, so... I mean, well, it stands up for the, uh, for the working class, so exactly. that's what I like about it. So. Exactly. I might, I might vote. I might register. You've got until tomorrow at five, and so... it's £25, pound, isn't it? It is £25, pound, but it's worth having your say, isn't it? The Labour Party has been destroyed. It is being destroyed, and that's all I'm going to say. And he is part of that destruction. He really is. How can he hold power when all the time he sat on the on the back benches and voted, never voted for the Labour Party practically? No, he disagreed always, with, yeah. He's always he's voted. He's been so far on the left wing. He's, he's always voted you based have to have on. You consensus. He's always voted based. And it's no, he's always on voted his based on, based on, either his conscience or the consensus of his constituents. With Labour's divide running so deep, there's talk of the split becoming permanent. It's the faith supporters. Mm. You've lost. You've sure, lost. I know. You've lost them a in long Scott. Road to so, win back. so actually, like, I do understand perhaps, that, perhaps we shouldn't be having thing. this conversation about saving Labour. Perhaps we should be creating new, new Labour. I don't. I just don't think a split would work. Like I get what you're saying. I totally but, understand. But in the and in the long term, yeah, like totally. I don't think he's a credible candidate to stand against. I mean, up do you think against... the policies? I mean, there's no real difference between, for example, Owen Smith and Jeremy. Well, like, there is a tra Trident's a, a point of difference. Um, and I think... I mean, is that I think so this, important to you, though, that you'd rather lose an election for that? that well, I, do, I, do, I don't... Right I don't I'm not convinced Owen Smith can, can win an I election. Mean, Jeremy Corbyn definitely can't win an election. Well, that's where we'll have to agree <laughs> to disagree. A poll out today suggested Jeremy Corbyn would easily win the race. Although, who trusts polls these days? At the end of the day, we're a political party. And we can, only, we can only change things if we are in government. Yeah. Um, therefore, for us, the most important thing at the moment is getting us into government with the right values. So if he we... He does have the right values. He does, of course, but, that's, but he doesn't, he's not the person the to get us into government. Why not? Because, well, the polling at the moment would suggest otherwise. Then you should change the polls, make people vote for him. We'd be voting for Jeremy. Yes, I like it. Yeah, yeah. Thank just you. Just let him breathe. Yes. Just let him breathe. Stop Give happen. him five minutes on the telly as well. Yeah, just let him breathe a little <laughs> bit and get, into, get his thoughts about somebody decking it into him. He should do this, should do that. Let him do it. Where was fact. he the, when we had the referendum? Where did, was Jeremy did you know Corbyn? That Jeremy Corbyn had gave the highest number of speeches out of any member of the Labour Party during the EU referendum. Why, why It would be wrong to write off the anti-Corbyn faction. Unless people like you sign up, like it won't work. Okay, look, so, I'll yeah. sign up. Especially with a long summer of campaigning ahead to influence party members. But the Corbyn campaign does inspire a passion that's harder for moderates to match. Anyone who's not a party member has until 5pm tomorrow to be able to register to cast a vote for either side. Secunda Kamani. Well, I'm joined by Stephen Kinnock, MP, who is supporting Owen Smith, and by James Schneider from the pro Jeremy Corbyn uh, Momentum Group. Evening to you both. Um, James, if Owen Smith wins the leadership, will you go out and bat, bat for Labour? Yeah, absolutely. And loyally. Yeah, absolutely. So you'll, you'll accept the result. Absolutely. Yeah. Every, everyone should accept the result. We've got a, a democratic election, and then whoever wins, we should get behind who's supported, and we should move forward as a party. Absolutely. I've got to ask you the same question about Jeremy Corbyn, Stephen. I will continue to be honoured to serve my constituents from the back benches. I have voted uh, in favour of a motion of no confidence in Jeremy. That means I couldn't uh, possibly serve on the front bench, although I doubt I'd be invited to do so. Right. But I'd be happy to serve from the back benches. Nick Watt, our political editor, saying earlier that he thought the plan might be for a kind of war of attrition against Jeremy Corbyn if he wins, as seems likely, um, an, an attempt to get shadow cabinet elections, which would shoulder him with a shadow cabinet he doesn't really want. Would you serve in the shadow cabinet if there were elected shadow cabinet members? I think it's a real struggle to serve for uh, somebody where you've actually voted that you have no confidence in their leadership. But uh, I don't want to speculate about that. What I want to say is we now have Owen Smith as uh, a very talented uh, politician coming forward with the courage to stand up and save the Labour Party. And I'm absolutely convinced that over the coming months, 
uh, we'll see the opinion of the membership swing in behind Owen, precisely because if we don't have a new leader, we cannot form a credible opposition. If you can't form a front bench, you don't function as a credible opposition. This is about saving our democracy as much as about saving the Labour Party. James Schneider, can I just ask you about that sort of war of attrition? Because some people have their head in, head in their hands in despair at the idea that this isn't going to be resolved and we just face essentially a continual battle uh, within the opposition rather than a battle between the opposition and the government. Yeah, I find the idea of a war of attrition extremely disappointing. I think what we need to see at the end of the leadership election is as many MPs as possible working behind the leader, whichever one is elected, and then also working with the party members. We're now the largest left to centre party in Europe. We've got over half a million members. It's going to increase I think one, uh, you know, after um, membership opens again, seeing if the registered, today or something, seeing if the registered, registered supporters, supporters want to uh, want to join, we, you know, momentum be making lots and lots of phone calls, lots of interest in, uh, in joining up. And I think we, what we'll need to do when we come together is make an asset out of our membership far but, more than we have. But you will oppose as rigorously as you can. MPs voting for the shadow cabinet, I assume, because that would just shoulder the leader with a shadow cabinet who disagree with him on probably well, everything. Well, that's something that I would have to go through party conferences, not something that I have to say I've thought about. Mm. Can I just ask about Owen Smith? I mean, because you think he'll win. In his background, and I know the Times are reporting on this tomorrow, it's not a secret, he was a lobbyist at some point, served for Pfizer, the pharmace American pharmaceutical company. Do you think that will be something that will be held against him? No, because I think what Owen represents is a new chapter, a fresh start for the party. He uh, entered Parliament in 2010. He's not got a Brownite label or a Blairite label. He is Labour, Labour to his fingertips. He did his launch from uh, his constituency. That's where he lived his politics and, and learned his politics. He's got Labour values and he's had the courage and the determination to stand in what is a very difficult time for our party. And I'm convinced that the membership will get behind him. Uh, because he's got the values and the determination that we need to win. Right. And you know his position on the p private health care in the NHS is what? What, what, what? what is his position on that now? Well, uh, Owen has come out and said very clearly that we need things, for example, like a new deal for Britain, £200 billion pounds to invest right. in but our private, working private class. Private health care in uh, the NHS. Well, do, you have, uh, do you know what his view on uh, that is? I'll, I'll tell you which I, Owen is. He's right. a Bevanite. And uh, he uh, supports uh, the National Health Service free at the point of delivery. It's one of the great assets of our nation right. created by the Labour Party. Owen will stand four square behind that. We will potentially get back to that. Can I ask you what Jeremy Corbyn's position is? No, we, we know Jeremy Corbyn's position. No need to detain ourselves on that. Um, can I just ask you, James, it is possible that there will be a split if Jeremy Corbyn wins, that the right, the MPs will declare UDI. They then get the money that the state gives the opposition. They become the opposition in Parliament. They get the money that the opposition get in Parliament. That would leave you or your side or your residual Labour Party. You can have all the people on the streets, but it leaves your residual Labour Party in some trouble, doesn't it? I don't think that's a very helpful hypothetical. I think what we've got now is a leadership election which is going to be about policies, it's going to be about ideas, and then afterwards we need to have members who seem to overwhelmingly support Corbyn and the MPs need to talk and they need to understand what one another's positions are. And I think there's been too little so far of the MPs understanding the direction that the members want to take, how they wish to transform the party. Because we have to remember that it's not like Labour was in, is in difficulty now. We've had two bad general election defeats. There's a crisis for social democracy across the Western world. And we need to have a new model party that is fit for the 21st century, that uses a mass membership, that organises in communities. And I think we need to hear a lot more of that getting, getting through to MPs. And I think as that message does get through and MPs do respect the democratic mandate that hopefully Jeremy Corbyn will win again, we won't be having these kind of hypothetical right. discussions. James calls it an unhelpful hypothetical. Can you tell me, Stephen Kinnock, that you have not been in any conversations about such a scenario or plotting out what the trajectory would be if it was necessary? Absolutely, and I can tell you I joined the Labour Party in 1985. There is no only one. conversations about the party splitting. I have not had a single conversation about the party splitting. There is only one Labour Party. It is the party that I believe is the one that I joined, and it believes in uh, gaining power for working people through a parliamentary dem democratic system. And what we know is you cannot do that when you have a leader who has lost the confidence but of the parliamentary Labour leader, Party. But if you have that leader, what happens? 
Well, uh, as I've said, those of us who have given a motion of no confidence will be honoured to serve our constituents from the back benches, and it will be up to the leader to figure out how he forms a credible and effective opposition. I see it as a very difficult challenge uh, for him to face, but what I also know is we have now uh, Owen Smith in place, the party Understand. unites behind him, and we will win this thing. It's going to be an interesting summer. Thank you both uh, very much.